What's up guys? This is David over at Nullset Computer Company again. And this is just going to be a short episode on IP cameras. So, what am I talking about? I am talking about one of these guys right here. This is your standard IP camera. As you can see on the back, it's got an antenna for wireless. It's got ports for sound, if you want to play sound through it. And it's also got a ethernet jack so that you can hardwire it straight into your router if you want to. Now I picked a couple of these up from Amazon. They're about 60 bucks a piece. <laughs> uh, they are well worth it because they are extremely simple to set up and you don't have to have a DVR or a digital video recorder. Um, and uh, one of the cool things is it's wireless so I don't have to run any Cat5 cable, thank goodness, because I hate running cable. As you guys know, I deal with cable all the time. I re-cable servers all the time, and I hate it. It's not my favorite thing to do. The only reason I do it is because people pay me a buttload of money to do it. Anyways, back to this camera. So I have one of these. This one specifically I have set up, and it is mounted just like this. It's mounted just like this uh, above my garage, so that way I can see uh, my premise. I can see who's walking past my house, who's trying to break into my car, uh, if anybody's trying to egg my house, or if somebody's trying to TP some trees in my yard. You know, some shenanigans like that, the high school kids down the street. Another cool thing about this is uh, the camera is fully rotational. So it goes all the way up, it goes all the way down, like so like that and it also goes down and up like that now you can actually control it remotely so uh, you could be away from your home and if you have a smartphone Android or iPhone etc and they have an app that you can use uh, the one I use is free it's called IP cam viewer and I can remotely log into this camera and see exactly what's going on at my premises when I'm not there so if I'm at the airport getting ready to catch a flight and I just want to, you know, check to see if I got a, a package delivered, I can do that. Now, when you first get this camera, it's going to be factory default. So the wireless is not going to work when you first get it. In order to set up the wireless, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have your Cat5 cable, right? And that's going to plug in straight to the back. So it's going to plug in, uh, let's see, just like that. You're going to plug it in, right? Your router, remember this guy over here, if you remember from my last episode, it's going to plug into a port on the back of your router. Your router is going to use DHCP, if you have it enabled, to assign this guy an IP address. Once you get the IP address of this camera that you've thrown on the network, you can then go over to your computer type that IP address in and you can log in with the default credentials to the camera. From there you will be able to set up wireless. So once you're into the configuration console of the camera you can go over to a setting for Wi-Fi and it will do a uh, probe, it will do a wireless probe to see what wireless networks are around. It's got a little Wi-Fi card built into it. Once you've found your network you can then type in the web key, hopefully you're not using a web key, use your WPA key or whatever kind of security authentication that you're using for the router, and then you can uh, take the Cat5 cable out, and it is now running on your Wi-Fi network. Now, the nice thing about not having to run cable is you can put this in a lot of different places on your premises, that you would normally be able to do if you did have to run Cat5 cable. Like this, I mount this one above my garage, as I said, and I also have another one of these that I mount uh, above my doorstep so I can see who's knocking on my door, you know? Uh, who's trying to sell me those stupid magazines so that they can go to a trip to Europe? Things that I don't care about and solicitors that I'm not gonna give a time of day to. <laughs> so, in order for you to access this camera from WAN, which is your wide area network, and that's basically the internet, 
you are going to have to set up on your router something called port forwarding. And all port forwarding is, is when you go to send a request to your public IP address. So uh, your public IP address might be 24.36.11.14. Uh, it's going to send that request to your router, and then your router is going to look in its table for port forwarding and see what kind of uh, what port it's it's actually going to be on. So, for example, this guy uses port 80 uh, for all of its uh, video streaming. The nice thing about this is you don't have to have a DVR. All you got to do is throw some software on your computer and it will automatically record everything that goes on for you. Uh, one thing I would suggest, if you are going to leave this on 24 hours a day and you are going to be recording all of the video, I set mine to motion detection so that way I don't have, you know, gigabytes or terabytes of just video of absolutely nothing happening. Um, now this, this camera, this particular model, it's a Loftek, that's L-O-F-T-E-K, it's a Loftek uh, B-series camera. Now the highest resolution that this can record in is 640 by 480, which actually isn't too bad because what you're going to be worried about is if something does happen, what quality of video are you going to be able to hand over to the police department so that you uh, can help them identify the perpetrator, right? So 640 by 480 is actually, uh, it's a pretty clear picture. It's not bad as far as frame rate goes. If this is going to be over your uh, wireless network, this particular camera only supports up to wireless G technologies. Uh, there are wireless N cameras and there's new wireless technology which is wireless AC which is just as fast as running a Cat5 cable from this to your router. So on Wi-Fi I get about 15, uh, about 15 to 17 frames per second. But when it's hardwired straight into my router, I get a full 30, a full 30 frames per second, which is pretty nice. I don't want to run Cat5 cable all the way from my router here to my camera, so I just leave it on wireless. Okay, so let's go back to port forwarding. As I said before, when you're setting up your little iPhone application, you're going to want to put your public IP address uh, as the a, the IP address of the camera that you are trying to access. So you have your router and this guy has an external IP address and it has an internal IP address. So like I said the public IP address is 24.12.11.14 or what, whatever yours is. You can go to ipchicken.com or you can go to whatismyip.com to get that IP address. And then it also has an internal uh, an internal IP address. So it uses something called NAT, which is N-A-T, which stands for Network Network Address Translation. Uh, and, and that just means it assigns everything on your internal network the same IP schema as your router. So like this guy's 192.168.1.1, that is the IP address of this router. So all of my devices that are going to be plugged into it are going to be dot two dot three so this camera could be 192.168.1.4 something like that now when you actually go into the router and set up port forwarding you're gonna have to know what port you're actually trying to communicate with so this guy uses port 80 port 80 is what it uses to stream the video and the sound uh, to your endpoint device, which is your iPhone or a friend's computer, whatever it is. So when you go in to configure your router, you're going to want to put the IP address of the device and you're going to also want to put the port that it's going to be listening on, so port 80. Once you have configured that properly, you should then be able to go uh, to your iPhone from a remote location and open up your IP viewer camera saw, uh, application and uh, input your public IP address and the port number which is 80 and 
boom, you should be able to view everything that is on this camera. Uh, and, and later in this, uh, this episode, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a screen scrape, and I'm going to show you exactly how to set up port forwarding uh, for my router. It's different for each router, you know, D-Link, Netgear, Linksys, they all have different, different ways to do it, and they have different terminologies, but essentially you're doing the same thing. Uh, one other thing that I should mention is with this camera, it has these, you see these lights all around the lens? These are infrared. So at night, even if it's pitch dark outside, I can still see what's going on. And I can remotely control this from the phone. So if I need to pan left or pan right or up and down, I can do that from my iPhone. It's uh, pretty nifty and it's it's pretty sweet. I like it a lot. The two cameras were only 120 bucks. It literally took me 30 minutes to mount both of them up, configure them, and get them onto my network. So, uh, yeah, that's just a brief overview of this this IP camera system. This is a great Loctec camera, and for 60 bucks, you can't beat it. Um, and so, yeah, let's go ahead and go over to the screen scrape and check out port forwarding. All right, guys, so I'm here at my desktop, and I'm going to show you how to uh, do port forwarding. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my router, 168, whoops, dot zero dot one. Okay, so we're on my login screen. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to, let's see where it is. I believe it's in advanced. All right. And uh, in the advanced tab, you can see that I have forwarding set up. Okay. Now, the IP of my camera that I set it, I gave it a static IP address, is 192.168.0.66. And as you can see, I put the start port for 80, and I put the ending port for 80. Now, in the protocol section, you can see you have TCP and you have UDP. Uh, you're going to actually want to select both if you have the option, right? and then you're going to enable it just like that. Uh, mine is really simple. You know, there's not there's not much more to it. Uh, and yeah, it, you know, if you need help uh, how to set up port porting on your specific router, just shoot me a message and you know, I'll I'll do research and I will find out exactly what you do to set up your port porting. There's not much more to it. You're going to hit apply and it's going to go ahead and set that up. So then, uh, you know, you can go to whatismyip.com and you will be able to find out what your public IP address is. Once you've got your public IP address and your port forwarding uh, configured correctly, you should then be able to uh, download the iPhone or Android app that you want to use for your camera and you should be able to plug in your public IP address and it will take you to uh, it will take you straight to your camera. So yeah, that was it. Uh, that's all. You guys have a great day. Again, this is David at Nullset Computer Company. And I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, uh, like, comment, and subscribe.